waxy white, as translucent as a ghost, and covered in scales. This paranormal parasite looks as ghastly as it acts, as it saps the nutrients from unsuspecting mushrooms. It doesn't need the light, so it's often found in the deep dark woods with other fairy tale monsters. This is the ghost plant. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floralogic. Today we're talking about a spooky specter of a plant that lives in the deepest, darkest, moistest forests of the Americas and Asia, Monotropa uniflora, otherwise known as ghost pipe, Indian pipe, or ghost plant. If ghost pipes look scary to us, they might be even scarier to our pets. Fortunately, today's sponsor is here whenever your pet becomes scared, anxious, or stressed. Cradle is a dog supplement company focused on helping all dogs live a stress-free life. It offers unique products for the many stressors in a dog's life, such as separation stress. Research indicates that up to 16 million dogs suffer from separation anxiety. Their chillers, long-lasting hard chews, and all-day calming bones are great for separation stress. I recommended Cradle to a friend of mine and their dog stays happy and calm whenever his owners leave the house. Cradle products are designed to be easy for you to use. All are single serve and perfectly portioned by dog weight for the very best pet parent experience. Cradle's Botanitec formulation is the backbone of all of their products. Botanitec is a blend of proven, pure, human-grade ingredients with natural flavoring and no artificial colors. Plus, Cradle has partnered with animal shelters across the country, providing free Cradle products and calming adoption kits for pet parents to ease the transition into their pet's forever homes. For 20% off your order of Cradle products, go to cradlemypet.com slash animalogic and use promo animalogic at checkout. You can also shop on Amazon or visit your local Walmart to see their line of calming supplements in person. The ghost plant's scientific name, Monotropa uniflora, is a real mishmash of classical languages. Monotropa from the Greek for one turn and uniflora from the Latin for one flowered. One turn, one flowered basically describes the fact that each stem only has a single odorless flower. But what the scientific name blatantly ignores is that this plant is spooky to the armpits. How do you say creepy as hell in Latin? Let's start with its looks. This plant is a ghostly translucent white, or sometimes pink, that develops black spots as it ages. It's a perennial, ranging in height from 10 to 30 centimeters and commonly grows in clusters. Dare to venture out where it lives and pick a bunch and it'll turn from shimmering white to goth black right before your very eyes. Because it's so delicate and looks like frozen jelly, the ghost plant is sometimes also called the ice plant because it seemingly melts away when picked up and handled. So if you're hoping for a snowy white bouquet of ghost plants to haunt your credenza, sorry to disappoint. The ghost plant's stem is covered in scaly modified leaves called bracts. If you think you've never heard of a Bract before, you may know them better than you realize. You might even decorate your home with Bracts every December. The flowers of a poinsettia are actually a bunch of Bracts that are more fabulous than the true flowers themselves. The flower of the ghost plant nods downward until it's pollinated by an insect, at which point it points upright. Bumblebees are the typical pollinators, and they get a sweet nectar and some yummy pollen as a reward for their visit. After it blooms, it goes dark, and the flower is replaced with a seed capsule full of tiny, wind-dispersed seeds. The root system of the ghost plant is brittle and fleshy. The roots are also apparently very tasty to grizzly bears, who've been seen digging them up for a nice snack. The ghost plant is in the Ericaceae family, otherwise known as heaths or heathers, depending on your preference. Famous members of this family of over 4,000 include blueberries and cranberries. While it may be related to your favorite yogurt toppings, the pale color, downturned flower, and firm, fleshy texture of the ghost plant often lead people to falsely assume that this plant is a mushroom. While not a fungus itself, fungi do play a key role in how ghost plants get their nutrients. So the connection with fungus is not that far flungus. Which brings us to the creepy as hell way it gets its nutrients. The ghost plant is one of 3,000 heterotrophic plants, which need to rustle up their nutrients from outside sources. And heterotrophs do just that, but in very uncanny ways. 
insectivorous plants like Venus flytraps, butterwort, sundew, and pitcher plants, which we've talked about on the channel, catch and digest bugs for nutrients. Parasitic plants like daughter sap their nutrients from a host plant. Like daughter, the ghost plant is a parasite and it lacks the chlorophyll necessary to make its own food from sunlight. The ghost plant was once thought to be a saprophyte, a plant or fungi that eats dead or decaying matter. But new research has found that instead of feasting on the dead, ghost plants take a very vampiric approach, sucking the nutrients from unsuspecting fungi. These are mycorrhizal fungi that live around the bases of trees in the deep, dark woods where ghost plants are found. In fact, almost all terrestrial plants have root-infecting mycorrhizal fungi. They live in what's called mutualistic symbiosis. The plant gives the fungi nutrients through its roots, and in turn, the fungi enable the plant to increase its nutrient and water absorption capabilities. The relationship between fungi and ghost plants, however, is anything but mutual. The ghost plant catfishes the fungi, tricking it into thinking it's entering another legit symbiosis. But this relationship is a toxic one, since the ghost plant doesn't give anything back. It just siphons off the fungi's hard-won nutrients and energy, like the parasite it is. If only ghost plants were as nice to fungi as they are to bumblebees. So the tree does the photosynthesizing, the fungi absorbs the nutrients from the tree's roots, and the ghost plant steals them from the fungi. And they do it all without lifting a single bract. Ghost plants are so delicate that propagating them at home is next to impossible. They rely entirely on a specific climate, dark and moist conditions, and, of course, the tenuous love triangle between the tree and its fungus. No matter how many times you criticize it for wearing white after Labor Day, you'll never be able to throw enough shade at this spooky parasite to make it thrive outside the forest. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Bye. The spooky bye. Did I disappear? Am I gone? But what this plant? No. Hey, <laughs> it's a spooky. Ooh, oh, 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 it's a spooky. I'm a show. Okay. <sighs> oh, damn. Okay, so, okay, so sorry, sorry. I remember. Okay. How do you say creepy as hell in Latin? Je ne sais pas. Oh man. French. The roots are apparently also very tasty to grizzly bears, who have been observed digging them up. Observed. They've been observed. I observed them. If only ghost plants were as nice to fungi as they were to bumblebees. Do it again with a salt in No plants were harmed in the filming of this show about plants, except for the footage that we're showing you probably in another clip where plants are very clearly being harmed.